All right, so in this video, we're gonna go over susceptibility testing for our YBCO in this high temperature superconductor lab and MSC 407. Um, so susceptibility is a way uh, where we can measure the critical temperature of a superconductor. We can see where that transition um, is. And so before we start with that, let's go over what we need for this um, activity as we always do. So um, since we are measuring this as a function of temperature uh, and we want to look at the critical temperature, we need liquid nitrogen. So I have a doer filled with liquid nitrogen. I've got my cryo gloves and sh uh, face shield to protect me while I'm dealing with that. Um, uh, along with that, we need our pellets. So I've got the bag of our pellets. Uh, so we're going to use those uh, small pellets. Um, and to operate that, we're going to have a, a quite a bit of circuitry. Uh, involved in this. So within this other doer that's open on the top, uh, we've got uh, uh, the container is full of glass beads. Uh, so the glass beads basically uh, insulate everything for us so we get a slow uh, ramp up of temperature uh, after we add the liquid nitrogen. Uh, and inside of that, we have our copper coils. Uh, so these copper coils are surrounded uh, uh, in Teflon, uh, basically the the uh, framework is Teflon, and then we wrap uh, co uh, copper coil around that to make an inductor. And so we have actually two of those uh, in here to hold two different pellets. So those are our, um, basically our in inductors, and they hold our YBCO pellets to measure the susceptibility. Uh, and then from there, we've got uh, breadboards for each uh, coil. So these breadboards allow us to set up the circuit uh, the way we need to do that. So I'll walk you through uh, how the circuit's set up. Um, and then we also need a function generator for each setup. So we actually have two there, you can see. So this sets uh, an AC sinusoidal uh, function uh, that we're gonna use for the susceptibility measurements. And we also have back here that you might not be able to see um, some uh, National Instruments devices for measuring um, current voltages uh, of the, the circuit, and also another one that is used to hook up to thermocouples so we can measure the temperature inside the, this container here. And so to kind of put all of that together, we need uh, some software that will measure the uh, response of our system uh, in terms of temperature. So we, we have our sort of homemade, uh, home-built uh, uh, program here that will measure all that and we'll go through um, how this is set up uh, as well. So basically the, the steps that I'm going to show you in this video uh, to get this to uh, working is we're going to set up our YBCO pellets uh, within those holders, those uh, copper coils and the Teflon holders. Uh, so we're going to set all that up and I'll show you um, more about the coils and where the thermocouples are and so forth and we're going to put the YBCO pellets in that. And then we're gonna, going to uh, set up the doer here uh, uh, to slowly increase in temperature from liquid nitrogen temp temperatures. And then we're gonna go through setting up the circuit and setting up the, uh, the uh, frequency generator to the correct settings that we need for this uh, measurement. And then I'm gonna show you the software and how we actually uh, record the experiment that we're doing. And then we'll see the, uh, then I'll uh, actually put liquid nitrogen in here and then we'll uh, see this uh, progress through a, a run. And we're actually gonna use your pellets in this run. So we'll kind of, I'll probably show a time lapse of it actually running on the, uh, the software. All right, so that's kind of what we're gonna show in this video. Uh, and so those are the kind of steps that we're gonna go uh, here in a second. So I'll cut and then we'll come back and we'll look at the setup of the pellets in these Teflon holders. All right. So we're back here and I want to show you the uh, copper coil uh, and that's in, in a Teflon holder. This is what's going to contain our pellet. So this is uh, Wednesday A, the first uh, dry pressing session and then the pellet is number one. So we're gonna put this in our holder here, but let me just kind of walk you through what this is. So as you can kind of see, it's got a bottom piece that screws in. It's also got a top piece that does the same. Um, and so that's made out of Teflon to kind of insulate. 
And so the inside is where our pellet's gonna go. So we're gonna put our YBCO pellet in here. Uh, and you might be able to tell that there's a little piece of wire in there. That's actually the thermocouple. So this is gonna measure the temperature right up against our pellet. So this is a T-type thermocouple uh, that's in there, and that's good for really low temperatures. So that's what we're gonna be using. We also have another thermocouple that's gonna be on the outside of the coil, kind of touching the coil. And that's to measure the temperature outside uh, of the uh, copper coil. Uh, you, so you can't actually see the copper coil because we've protected it with some tape. But basically, there is uh, a section in here, in the middle section, it's uh, one half inch uh, high, that has uh, a thousand turns of a copper wire uh, outside of the, the Teflon. So uh, just to give, give you some more specifics of that, that's a 30 gauge wire, so that means that it has a uh, 0.01 inch diameter of a copper wire, and the, um, the coil uh, diameter on the outside is 0.6875 inches, and again, like I said, there's, there's basically 100 turns of that wire. So that allows us, um, that turning of the wire makes this an inductor. So we basically have an inductor underneath this piece of tape that's protecting it because that wire is so thin. And so then the two s sort of small screws that you see here, uh, that are, those are the electrical connections to that coil, and then those go to our circuitry. So basically, we've got two thermocouples, one that goes into the pellet, one that stays on the outside uh, near the uh, coil, and then the coil is hooked up here by these screws that goes to our circuit. Okay. So that's basically what this holder is. Uh, and so it's all it is is an inductor, which means it's a, a, a wrap of wire around a, a cylinder. And so we're gonna put our YPCO pellet inside of this so that when this uh, induces current, we pick that up with our pellet above and below the transition temperature. So this is a, a sort of a non-contact method in which we can measure the response of the inductor to our pellet and vice versa. Okay, so let me go ahead. Um, this, is our, um, this is what we call A. It's the first of our two um, coils that we have. So I'm only gonna show you the one uh, but this is where this pellet is going. And then we'll also do another one, the other coil, and we'll place uh, pellet number two in that. So you've already seen kind of data on that. So let me open this up. And we've got tweezers here to handle these pellets. And I've got my gloves on. All right. So I've got the pellet, and I'm gonna load it in to the coil. And give it to this. It's a very tight fit. I'll pause here for a little bit so I can get a better grip on it. All right, <laughs> so we're back. Um, I had to, the pellet was actually a little bit too big. Uh, I think from the centering conditions that we had, it actually expanded a little bit. So I just took um, some sandpaper, some 400 grit sandpaper to the edges uh, and just removed a little bit of material um, off of this uh, to allow it to fit into the holder. And so now it actually fits in quite nicely. You can see it drops down in there. I'm just going to make sure it's flat. So you can see it's flat in there. And so since it's pressed up against the other side, the thermocouple will be right on the YBCO. And so I'm going to close this up. So this is a screw system. So I just need to screw this into place. And so you don't want to over tighten it because that can kind of crush the pellet if it's kind of weak. So I'm just going to uh, screw this closed until I feel some resistance from the pellet. All right, so that's pretty good. 
All right, so it's in there, it's locked in place. Um, everything's good to go. I've got all the connections uh, here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna repeat that for the other pellet and the other coil. So we're gonna do um, uh, Wednesday a section, a session one, uh, a pellet two in that coil, that B coil. Uh, and I'm gonna get that set up and then we're gonna come back and I'm gonna show you the circuitry uh, and how to set that up. All right, so before we get to the circuitry, um, we need to put the um, holders into our doer, which has already has some glass beads at the bottom. It might be a little hard to see. Okay, there you go. Um, it's The reason it's kind of hard to see is because the whole thing is uh, reflective, and so you get a lot of glare. But there's some glass beads down here. So we kind of have a base layer of those glass beads. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the, the tongs here, and I'm going to put our uh, holders into the uh, container here. So I'm going to grab the first one. This is A. So you can see here, we, that's the one we just filled up. Uh, and so I'm going to put it sideways on the left side. And I'm going to take the other one. Uh, you didn't see this one being filled, but it's the same process. So this is a second pellet from the same group. And I'm going to put it, and I'm going to try to get the same orientation. moving it around a little bit so I can get it in the right orientation. So you can kind of see they're down there. And at this point, uh, once I'm happy with where they're at, um, I'm going to, uh, just to kind of get these wires out of the way, going to zip tie them together, a little twisty, all right, and then I've got the rest of the glass beads back here, and I'm just going to pour them on top carefully so that they don't go everywhere, all right, and so this is our insulating material, uh, and I'll just kind of level it off, so this is our insulating material that we have. Uh, and you can see it's full now with these glass beads. Uh, so we're going to essentially at this point, uh, once we're ready to go after I show you the, uh, the circuitry and the software, we're going to pour liquid nitrogen in here to cool down everything. Uh, and once it's down at liquid nitrogen temperatures, we're going to allow the doer and the, the beads in here to slowly uh, remove heat or add heat, right? So it's going to slowly heat up and we have the doer and the uh, beads so that that's very slow. And we're going to basically record the changes in the circuitry uh, as a function of temperature. So we've got this set up right now. Uh, and so we're going to go over and take a look at the breadboards and the circuitry for this experiment. All right, so we're looking at the breadboard for the what we call the B circuit, as you can see up here, we just labeled it B. Um, so I'm going to kind of walk you through what the circuit has. And so you'll notice the, the two wires uh, to start with, the red and the black. So if we start at the red and kind of trace it up, we'll see that it goes to our function generator. And so the red uh, is going in here to the function generator, uh, and then it's coming down here. right? And so then you, if you follow, oops, sorry, if you follow that red cord from the breadboard, it's going into the sort of column 35 that you might be able to read there from the orange cord. All right, so from there, everything in that column, if you remember from breadboards, uh, is connected uh, in series. And so we have a uh, resistor at that point. So this resistor uh, is 55.5 three ohms. And the reason it's 55.3 is that this matches really well with the resistance of our inductor, which is the coil, which we just talked about. So it matches pretty well with that 55.3 ohms. So basically, uh, this goes through the, uh, 
the uh, resistor. And then uh, these two wires that you see over here are the actual coil. So this is our resist, uh, this is our inductor. So basically at this point, we can plug in the inductor So now uh, the, the current goes through the resistor and through our inductor, and then on the other side goes through this green line to the, the black, which goes back up to the function generator, as you can see up here, right? And that's our zero volts. So that's kind of our uh, reference point. All right, so that's the basics of the circuit. It's a pretty simple circuit. We basically just have a resistor and an inductor. There we go. So the only other things that we need to set up here are we need to set up the measurements. And for this, we're going to measure two voltages. We're going to measure the voltage in. So we have two wires here. And let me show you those real quick. We have two wires. Uh, uh, an orange and a purple. Our orange wire is measuring the V in from the function generator. So I'm going to put that right here. So it goes in before the resistor. So we're basically measuring the voltage into the circuit. All right. The purple wire is me uh, measuring the voltage across the inductor. So we're actually going to put it over here after the resistor. All right, make sure it's fully in there. So the purple line here is measuring the voltage across the inductor, which is, again, these two wires here. So the reason we only need one uh, wire for each is because the uh, National Instruments machine back, which you can't kind of see there, but it is grounded um, to the zero. So that's actually the second, if you want to think of it as the second wire, uh, it's over here. So uh, we've got that. So basically we have our uh, voltage is measured. This is what we're going to measure on the screen. And then we've got our resistor in series and our inductor in series. And everything is set up. We've got the um, function generator uh, set up here. Uh, so a little note on the function generator. This is giving us, like I said, uh, an AC sinusoidal wave. Um, and right now, as you can see, uh, as you might be able to see, it's, again, there's a little glare there, but it's at 250 hertz. So that's our frequency for this experiment. So we set that on the instrument uh, with this knob here, with the fine and coarse knobs for frequency. And then everything else is going to be given to us on the software, which we'll talk about next. So that's basically how we can set up the breadboard uh, and the function generator. So 250 hertz frequency, uh, the circuitry here, which you can find uh, maybe a easier to follow diagram in your handout. And then we'll measure the um, voltages, current, uh, and uh, so forth on the software. All right, so we've got the pellet in the coils, and we've got the circuits set up, and the function generators are on. So I thought we'd move over here to the computer to look at the software. So. The software is in this folder called Superconductors, um, and then uh, it's a LabVIEW program, and it's called Superconductors. So if you just double click that, um, it will open it up. Uh, but we've actually already got it open. Um, so if I just click down here, it'll pop up. Yeah. There we go. All right, so this is what the software looks like. Um, and the first thing you'll notice is that there's kind of two of everything. Uh, so we have uh, A on the left 
and B on the right. That's because we have those two circuits and two pellets and two coils, right? Everything's duplicated so we can run this twice at the same time. Um, so as you remember, I put um, here, I've got the labels for you down here. The um, pellet that's from Wednesday A, session one, number one, is in the A um, coil. And then Wednesday A, session one, uh, pellet two is in the B coil. So that's just so I can kind of keep things straight. All right, so let me kind of go through what we have here. Um, so the first thing that we can look at is this tab, which says measured voltages. So this is basically measuring the um, V in and V inductor. So V into the circuit and V into the inductor. So V in is the white that you can see and V inductor is red. So we have about two volts RMS for VN and about one volt for the V inductor. So this is set by the frequency uh, and some of the other conditions that we can set um, on the function generator. Uh, we also have, if you can see it, um, voltage uh, of the resistor and we have current. So the current is set to be about um, 19 to 20 um, milliamps. And we also have a place to put the, the uh, resistor uh, information. So it's set at uh, 55.3. So we basically have it set at the, the, the value I told you earlier. And so all of that's repeated on the other side. You might see slight differences because they are slightly different, but for the most part, they're the same. Uh, and then also last thing down here, we have outside cell A temperature, inside cell A temperature. So this is on the pellet, the red is right on the pellet, and then this white one outside, this is the one on the coil. So there can be slight differences in this. And the same thing over here, we have those two temperatures. So we've got two temperatures on each, we've got voltages measured uh, on both of those. So this is kind of a, uh, the measured voltage screen is kind of to double check to make sure everything's on, to see the sinusoidal curve that we have uh, for this uh, setup. And then we'll look at data uh, in these data or bend data files. So that's what we kind of have here. But for now, we'll look at the voltages. All right, so when we're ready to go, when all this is set up just to verify that we have a sinusoidal curve and everything looks good uh, in terms of the, the currents are what we want to be, uh, we're set, again, like I said, we're setting these to 20, roughly 20 milliamps current on both of them. So we're at 19 right now, so that's good. Um, if we wanted to change that, we could change that on the function generator. And so then, we again, we have two, roughly two and one uh, voltages for Vn and Vn. All right, so that's set up to go. Um, once we're ready to go, uh, we are going to um, start the program. Uh, and then uh, it's actually running right now, but we'll restart it uh, so that you can see the process. So I'm gonna switch back over and we're gonna go over to the doer containing our pellets and we're gonna cool that down to temperature so that we can start this experiment. All right, so we're back here at the doer. Uh, and we're gonna pour liquid nitrogen to cool this down to liquid nitrogen temperatures. So we have the program running so that we can monitor the temperature and make sure we're at the lower end. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and pour liquid nitrogen in. And I'm gonna do this kind of slowly at, at first. There will be a fair amount of um, boil off as it cools down. So you'll probably have to add it uh, a couple times just to make sure that we cool everything down. And even though you can't see it right now, I'm looking at the computer screen to monitor the temperatures. And if you remember, they were uh, north of 200 K. Uh, now they're starting to go lower, uh, approaching 150. So I'm just monitoring that as F4. And so the, the idea is to pour as little as you need. Um, if it completely fills with liquid nitrogen, we'll have to empty some out. So we'll have to pour back out some. Otherwise, if it's completely full of liquid nitrogen, it'll take a very long time to heat up. 
And so we basically want to put in just enough to cool everything down to liquid nitrogen temperatures, uh, but then have really no liquid left over. All right, so it looks like I still need to pour some. All right, we're getting closer to 100K. All right, it looks like the outside temperatures are close to 80K, which is really close to the uh, boiling point of liquid nitrogen, uh, but the outside ones are a little higher, or sorry, the inside co uh, the, the coil are a little higher. So the inside of the, the holders will take a little more time to, uh, to cool down. And so I might go ahead and just add some more to try to speed that up. So that was the, the last of our liquid nitrogen. So hopefully that's enough. All right, so let me bring it back to the computer here and see what I'm looking at. So you can see there uh, on the temperatures, hopefully, we're around 80K. This is towards the lower end. The, the boiling point of liquid nitrogen is around 76, uh, but 80 is usually the lowest we can get to um, on this setup. Uh, and so basically, I'm gonna keep, uh, I'm gonna let this go for a little bit and uh, wait for these uh, temperatures to get to all sort of settle down uh, at 80. Uh, if I need to, need to, I'll add a little bit more liquid nitrogen, uh, but otherwise we'll come back after these cool down and we'll start up the program and uh, let it go from there. All right, so you might notice here down at the bottom, all the temperatures are now um, at 80 or lower. So that's kind of our threshold uh, in which we're uh, happy with uh, the results. So we just had, we're actually running the program right now but we just want to do it to monitor the temperatures. So what we'll do now that we have everything set to go is I'll end the program and I'll restart it up here uh, with the white arrow up at the top. That's a little hard to see. Um, and then what I want to do now is name it. So they may, it, this program makes you name it before you start. So I'll call this um, A, I'm basically going to give a lot of information because I want to indicate that A has Wednesday A, uh, session one, pellet one, I call it pellet one, and then B has Wednesday A, session one, pellet two. So just so that we know that both sets of data are here. So I'll go ahead and uh, name that. So I'll start it. And so at this point, the software is running. And so the, the software is actually running. And if we go over here to the data, you'll see it start to actually collect data. And so right now, it's at the lowest temperature. And so it's gonna take a bit of time for it to uh, ramp back up. So now that the software is running, we're measuring the voltage over the inductor 
um, over the current. So this is going to change with temperature and particularly around the transition temperature. So hopefully if we see something, we should see a, a change, a step um, at the transition or critical temperature of our superconductor. So this is a test in which we can measure that critical temperature. So I'm gonna let the software go. And um, so uh, I'll come back when it's done and show you the, the results that we have and the, the, the data from that as well. So uh, I'll pause the video here and then you'll come back, you'll see this right away. You'll see the, uh, the results and what happened with this test run. All right, so we're back. Uh, the run has finished. Um, as you can see, there's information here. So there is the measured voltages, the data, and the bend data. So the bend data basically takes the voltage of the inductor over the current, which is what you're seeing here, um, with respect to the temperature, and it basically bends it into specific temperature ranges so that we can do a subtraction for the susceptibility measurements. So it just makes, us e it, makes it easier to read. And so let's kind of take a look at what we have, right? So uh, initially at the low temperatures, you see that the V over I is relatively level uh, down here. And then you see an increase, um, a pretty sharp increase in the slope. And then it basically follows kind of a new path here. So this region right here is that critical temperature, the transition between superconducting and non-superconducting. So we measure it by the voltage of the inductor divided by the current. And we use that term as a stand-in for what it might look like. Because if you look in your handout and you look at the equation for susceptibility, you'll see that the V over I is squared and then uh, subtracted, we subtract the resistance of the, uh, the run as well. So we're gonna, in a separate run, we're gonna run the same temperature profile uh, with a blank holder, so no pellet, and we're gonna get the DC resistance R so that we can do those calculations. But this is just a general, um, gives you a, a, a look at where the temperature is. And we can kind of see it's here, uh, and then the same thing over here. So this gives us, again, critical temperature and allows us to calculate susceptibility. And so for each run, uh, you'll get the data file. Uh, so you'll have temperatures and the voltages, you know, V over I. You'll also get the error. So you can notice that the error bars are actually getting plotted here. So you'll have those error uh, as well. Uh, and this will allow you to, along with the DC resistance run with no pellet, allow you to calculate susceptibility for your experiment. So this is the data that you'll get. Um, this is how we're doing it. Uh, again, this is for Wednesday A, session one, pellet one, and then pellet two. Uh, and we'll redo this, and you'll see the data for all of the groups. We'll do at least two pellets uh, per condition that we ran for this experiment.